Wait, hello, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, my name is Luo Li. I'm working for the Shopee Data Infra team. So um, my uh, my topic today is uh, is the storage agri uh, acceleration and uh, civilization at Shopee. And um, uh, the content I'm going to share today is uh, more or less about Alexio, and also it is uh, it is the, it is from the real uh, real product environment from from Shopee. So if you are investigating or if you are uh, do some researching about the systems, you may can uh, you may can check the check the content out. Uh, okay. So uh, the agenda of my of my share today is uh, first I'm going to introduce the storage system and the and the and the current situation of our storage system as well as the challenges we have to deal with. And uh, second is uh, I will introduce the way we try to. We try to improve the performance of the storage systems and uh, and the, the improve uh, the improve the big data access in Shopee. And then uh, I will share something about how we uh, make the storage system as a service. <clears throat> um, this is the general architecture of our big of our big data system in Shopee. Uh, of course, uh, the real thing is much more complicated than this picture. Uh, I, I hate all the all the details since we only have to talk about the. The, the storage uh, storage system today. So generally speaking, um, uh, HDFS our our is our main uh, storage system, and we also use Ozone as a storage as our uh, object storage uh, solution. Uh, the main data processing framework are like Spark and Flink, and also Presto. Uh, we change it or we we'll, we we'll, we'll update our Presto version to Trino right now, but uh, it is also Presto. The, the notes from uh, the notes from Presto cluster are not shared the physical store of HDFS. So that is the that is where the yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the, the, the nodes from uh, Presto cluster are not shared the, the same physical server of HDFS. So that is where the problem comes from. And it is, it is also the solution we want to talk about today. <clears throat> so here is, here is the, here is the a little more uh, specific architecture of our HDFS and Presto. So um, uh, the, the be below is the, is the architecture of HDFS. It is quite classical. Uh, a multi data center and a multi namespace HDFS architecture uh, with the unified logical storage storage view. <clears throat> and the upper is the upper is our, our uh, Presto clusters uh, run different uh, business queries separately and read the data from HDFS. This is the architecture. So the problem under this architecture is um, the HDFS is not always in a 100% healthy status. Uh, sometimes it, uh, it will become slow and impact all the queries from HDFS and also from the from, from the spot. So uh, uh, we can see uh, we can see when HDFS got, got queued access to our pieces and the rest of queries will become slow and impact all the business. So uh, the first solution is to catch uh, is, is to catch the hot data uh, which has been read multiple times. Into, into into memory. So this is where we invoked our lobster to to help the Presto cluster to to catch the data in memory. Uh, this will also improve the Presto data access and also meanwhile uh, reduce the load of HDFS. So so because of the because of the Presto can read data from local cache, it doesn't have to attach uh, HDFS. Therefore, reduce the load and uh, process the HDFS. I'm sure I'm right. Okay. Uh, then, uh, then the architecture become become like this. Uh, first of all, we deploy Alexia work on Presto nodes, and uh, the local Alexia load the load, load the hot data into the memory uh, as a cache, and the Presto accepts the data from Alexia first uh, for, to access the access the cache first. Uh, if no data loaded in 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 Alexia, then access the HDFS like before. So this is the new architecture. 
say if some crystal plants access the hot hot data multiple times every day, uh, we can deploy local alarms on the same server of the crystal. Uh, this can this can probably solve the problem as above mentioned. Then uh, then the, of course the new uh, questions comes. So we have to we have to design a policy uh, of the data uh, to, to to data load. And we also have to keep monitoring and adjust the cache policy of the of each local LFCO cluster. So how we can do that uh, correctly and efficiently will be a problem. And also we found that uh, at the beginning the LFCO read performance is quite slow without uh, without some tuning. So uh, this is a problem we have to uh, we have to deal with. Here comes the acceleration work of the of the storage project. Uh, the, we designed a solution to control the Alexa data cache. Uh, first of all, we tell uh, we tell the Alexa master. We tell we tell the Alexa. Sorry, we tell the Alexa master that uh, um, uh, what data is the hot data and uh, should be loaded. And uh, and after loading the data, uh, we tag the we tag the data as the hot data in the in the HMS. HMS is the high from Stone. Uh, the metadata system of the Hive, uh, if you're familiar with the Hadoop ecosystem. And after that, uh, Presto, as well as other data processing pr uh, framework like uh, Swap and the Flink, uh, will, will know which piece of the data uh, has been loaded through the, through the tag and uh, therefore read the data from an Axial other than from HDFS. So, uh, but 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 how can we uh, how can we keep monitor and control the cache policy is uh, is a is a very uh, serious topic. So we de we develop developed this uh, cache manager to do the work uh, centralized. So the so the, the cache manager will contains uh, some load data policy inside from uh, from the beginning with the with the configuration, and then the uh, cache manager will also be told. Uh, what is the hot data and it should be loaded dynamically by some uh, uh, external algorithm or application through the API? The, the, the operation part of this uh, in this picture. And, uh, and after that, Alexa will know the, the, which data, uh, will get the, the data list, load the data into, into memory, into the cache, and then cache manager will check the data in HMS to tell Bristol and Spark instead of that. This data is a, is a, is a loaded the hot data in a lab uh, Therefore, the, the therefore the press on the print spark can read the data more efficiently from the lab if the data match the cache. This is the this is the, the architecture of the cache manager, which is the man, manipulate all the cache strategies and also uh, the data load. Also, Presto, Presto itself is one of uh, these is also one of the external service to update the cache list because Presto knows what data is uh, what data is queries will access every day and uh, what is the what is the most frequently accessed data. So we, when when the, when Presto find a new hot data, it will call the uh, cache manager's API to tell it that you should load this data too. Or you should retire some retire some code data from the from the cache. So after uh, after the cache manager tag the data in HMS, the uh, the metadata is like this. We all know that uh, we all know that uh, the the metadata uh, of in, in HMS is uh, is a key value property, right? So we add a key and then the then the cache and the value. Will indicate that uh, this data is is being cached in which uh, Alexa service in which data center. So the property value will be will tell Presto and Spark uh, uh, whether whether this data uh, whether this data has been loaded or not, or if loaded in which Alexa cluster and uh, which data center. So this so the the, the processing framework can can access the data. Uh, in memory, not not from the more from the HDFS API or some hard disk. So uh, this is the example of uh, this is the example of the of the tag. This is uh, so so we can this is this is a metadata of a table partition. So uh, it have so many uh, many 
properties like a number of files, the, 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 the total size of the, of the partitions. Here is the cache. Here is the, is the cache key and uh, indicate which, uh, which, uh, which cluster in the data center this data being cached in the cluster. So the, the Bristol and the Sparkle can go find the cache. Okay, so um, there will be another question. It is about how, uh, how should we keep the data uh, consistency? So if the, if, uh, if the loaded data got some update in HDFS or been deleted by, by some applications, how should Alexa know and uh, reload the data or retire the data? That is, uh, that is the problem of the consistency. Uh, this is uh, uh, the solution is, uh, is this is our solution. So we de developed a data monitor pipeline to consume the HDFS auto log and uh, monitor the status change of the load the, the loaded data list. So if the data got some modification like updated, deleted, etc., so the cache manager will know that uh, this data has has been uh, modified, and uh, Alexa will be notified that notified and. Uh, know how to reload the data or retire the data. It is, uh, it is actually a fleet job running in the background forever to, to monitor all the status changes. Uh, uh, here is some performance comparison before and after the uh, acceleration optimization. Uh, in some scenario, uh, the performance improvement is quite uh, significant. And uh, in some other in some other cases, the performance is not that uh, different. Like if the data access model is not that uh, 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 concentrated. Yeah, yeah. Here, the, the, there are there are patches we contributed to the open source community when we uh, do the uh, acceleration project. Uh, I'm not going to to go through all the details because of the time limit, but. Uh, but, but you can find the details from the from the link here. Uh, another question, uh, another another topic is about the storage uh, sanitization. It is about how we can uh, how we can uh, make our storage system as a as a service can access by some uh, uh, external applications or or or, or some uh, container deployed by by our Kubernetes. The background is. Uh, the background is uh, even HDFS as storage service. Uh, there are many external systems like uh, like Docker, like applications deployed on Kubernetes, and other standalone applications need to access the data like core uh, core core service, just the core uh, core API and got the got the data, but not like uh, to access a hard disk. And also, there are many applications are not uh, not so good with the with HDFS Java client. So um, to meet the diverse needs, we come up with the solution like, uh, like below. The, 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 the a few components of Luxio can help us uh, mount some uh, specific HDFS paths to, to local server or, or, some, uh, or some Docker con containers. And, uh, and also uh, by using the Luxio proxy service, we can export the HDFS data through H uh, S3 API. Uh, which will be uh, welcomed by many standalone applications. Uh, so, so S3 is a popular uh, data storage service, as we all know, and uh, it provides a rich uh, client SDK. So we have many uh, internal service uh, or applications which are uh, using the S3 SDK or some SDK, uh, S3 uh, compatible SDK or some or, or, or through the protocol of S3 to access the data from many uh, S3 compatible service. So since HDFS stone almost all the internal data of a company, uh, it's a huge convenience if we can export HDFS through S3 interface. So if uh, if we want to export HDFS as S3 service, uh, we can do below to do that. The steps are. Uh, we use Alexa to uh, Alexa can mod the HDFS data into the into the system, and then we de we deploy we deploy uh, the proxy service, which is compatible with the basic operation of the S3 API. Uh, since S3 SDKs for many uh, developed languages, 
people can use the, any language or client to access HTML stated by Elastic uh, proxy service. So let's uh, let's just see an example. Say we want the HDFS project directory to local projects directory. That's, uh, that's the upper, that was the upper part of the of the left picture, and uh, and then the, uh, uh, the the upper is the HDFS uh, perspective, and then the below is uh, is the Alexia, uh perspective. So Alexia used the used the one level directory as the S3 uh, bucket. And uh, it's sub, sub, sub directories and the files to form a key. Therefore, by uh, by uh, uniquely identify that object, the so the picture of uh, the picture on the right side is the uh, the demo of the S three Java SDK uh, uh, requesting the proxy service to read the data from from the from the file of words dot txt. So as we can see. It is uh, it is uh, bar it, it, its bucket is 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 set as the first level uh, directory and the rest of the path can be used as the key to obtain this object. So by this solution, we can we can export HDFS as a huge S three service and uh, and we can provide the convenience and the com compatibility to to application. So uh yeah. oh yes. This uh, this is also some uh, authentication improvement that we developed and uh, contributed to the open source community. Uh, so because of the time limit, I I can't share the details of the of the of the code. But uh, you can find, you, you can you can use the reference here to to get the detailed code and design. Uh, in general, we is the design is we we add a step when we access the we, when we access the the data from a Alexa proxy. Uh, to uh, authentic do the authentication or do the validate of the of the user. So uh, so this is the overall of our data uh, serialization architecture, in the architecture including the underlying uh, data storage HDFS and the Alexia of the of the data serialization of S three and uh, also the local mount as well as the integrated with uh, Kubernetes. That, Kubernetes and uh, and Docker. Yeah, uh, yeah. We we also made some uh, patches and the contribution to the open source community uh, when we do the data servitization project. Uh, please find the details uh, with the link. And uh, this is all. I think all the all the all the code have been uh, merged to the to the, to the open source uh, project. You can check it out. And of course, I, uh, I, uh, this is the cooperation with Shopee and the Alexa community. So of course, uh, we, we, we got, uh, we got so many, um, uh, we got so many, um, helps from the, from the open source community from Alexa. Uh, they are giving us many good suggestions and, uh, response of our code, uh, PR quickly as very supportive. Uh, yeah, because of the time limit, I'm I'm not going going to share more details. This is all the this is all content, but I have some extra pages behind the behind this slides. Uh, it's about some uh, some 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 code or some some design of our uh, technology. Uh, if you can, if you want to check it out, you can you can get information. Uh, yeah, this is my part. Thank you. Uh, you have mentioned that the HDFS side has some stable issue, and uh, you resolve this issue by adding a catch there. May I know what is the root cause and how you resolve this issue by a catch? Oh, now the the cache solution is just a uh, uh, one solution to improve the performance, but the root cause of the HDFS issue is 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 too complicated because there's too many. Applications or too many jobs are accessing the the, the system, but, uh, and uh, uh, we don't know what pattern of the application is to access the HDFS. So uh, we, we can't foresee the the problem. We just uh, we just uh, uh, first of all we keep uh, improve the performance of the of the system, and we keep monitor the keep keep monitor the performance of the system, and uh, we we keep uh, 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 keep ourselves. 
uh, be aware of the of the uh, potential troublemaking applications. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't have a one for all solution for the for the HTFS performance issue. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so this is a question from Ben. Uh, I want to understand like how often the HTML files is changed. Like you have the uh, you have the audit log, you have analyzed the audit log of HTML. Right? Uh, yeah. I just want to see like this is a normal case or this is like a once in a while you you see the data the cluster is like, yeah occurring. okay it's the, it's a, it's really depends on the on the application on the application but. Uh, since since most of our um, applications about uh, the ETL ETL jobs to do the to do the data processing daily or hourly, so it's not that frequently to change the data. It is like the uh, once per hour or once per, once per, for one day. So we can monitor that. But if uh, we keep change the keep 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 change the the files or directory. Or keep send any uh, too many uh, small files into the into the partition directory, that will be a trouble. Yeah, that will be a trouble. And also, uh, Alexa cannot um, cannot be so quick uh, react to that uh, scenario. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, actually, the reason I'm asking here is because I actually uh, I am working with the community on the maybe a solution for that, and we can talk this offline. I we want to have a simpler architecture to solve this issue. Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. So, no questions. Thank you all.